After planning to build a moon base and a futuristic city on Mars, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has moved his eyes toward Jupiter's fourth largest moon called Europa. For its highly anticipated mission to explore the moon, NASA has signed a deal with SpaceX and officially booked a ride to space in 2024. According to NASA officials, the $4.25 billion Europa Clipper spacecraft will launch atop a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket as part of a contract worth about $178 million. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Elon Musk Evolution, where we will tell you all the latest news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Earth-like fourth largest moon of Jupiter and whether it's habitable or not. If you want to find out more, then stay with us until the end of the video. Also, before we start the video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos. And let's get started. The leading rocket company SpaceX and NASA have been on very good terms since the company was awarded with NASA's Artemis project. SpaceX has already worked with NASA in recent years to send numerous cargo payloads as well as astronauts to the International Space Station. And this contract is another reinforcement of the agency's confidence in Elon Musk's company. According to this new Europa Clipper mission, NASA will use SpaceX's powerful Falcon Heavy rocket to reach the fourth largest and icy moon of Jupiter called Europa and study its environment to discover any signs of life. If all goes according to plan, Clipper will blast off in October 2024 from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida and arrive at Jupiter in April 2030. The probe will then study Europa in depth as it completes more than 40 close flybys of the moon over a period of about four Earth years. If we look back in time, Europa Clipper was officially given the go-ahead by NASA in 2015, but it got delayed. Now as the project is back on track, it has been decided that over the course of this mission, the probe will pass by the moon many times, providing researchers with a tantalizing look at the icy world, many of which believe there to be an ocean lurking under its icy crust. The spacecraft will also carry a suite of scientific instruments that will help scientists figure out if the moon could support life. So if NASA was planning to launch Clipper on its space launch system from the beginning, then how did SpaceX and Elon Musk get involved in the mission? Since its inception, Clipper was legally obligated to launch on NASA's space launch system, but that has recently changed due to perpetual delays and cost overruns with the SLS. The first flight of the SLS was originally supposed to happen in 2017. That mission was pushed to November 2021, and despite all of the mission's hardware being in Florida, NASA's watchdog agency still says the schedule remains highly unlikely. SLS is NASA's next moon rocket. The mighty launcher is designed to take payloads into deep space, and a test flight is slated to launch sometime late this year. In this test flight, the rocket, which surpasses the power of the Saturn V, will blast off on a trajectory around the moon to test out the vehicle's capabilities ahead of sending people and cargo. With the first four SLS rockets dedicated to returning humans to the moon, it is unclear when there will be one for Europa Clipper to use. That uncertainty led the House of Representatives opening the door for another option, and that is using a commercial launch vehicle. The change in wording greenlit the possibility of commercial alternative to SLS and the Clipper team started planning to look at all of the available options for the mission. At that time, NASA put out an official call for proposals and took its time reviewing the options. According to the agency, Falcon Heavy was the best option. However, opting for a commercially made heavy rocket presented both challenges and benefits. Talking about some of the disadvantages, despite the variety of options, none of the available commercial options are brawny enough to propel Clipper on the same trajectory that SLS would take. So Clipper's trip will take about five and a half years as opposed to three. In addition, a commercial launcher will also need a kick stage, which is an extra stage added to the top of the rocket to give it a power boost. Furthermore, it is unclear how exactly the decision to go with a private rocket will affect Clipper's overall cost, but a commercial launcher will not be as pricey as SLS. However, agency officials have stated that the extra travel time will add to the mission's price tag. Therefore, considering all these problems, NASA was left with a conundrum. Does Europa Clipper sit in storage and wait for the chance to fly on an SLS rocket? Or does the mission take a little longer to get to Jupiter? That decision led to NASA ultimately choosing to launch Clipper on a Falcon Heavy. And this is where SpaceX and Elon Musk enter the story. Casey Dreyer of the Planetary Society told Al Jazeera that this is a great bargain for NASA as it would mark significant savings over the estimated $2 billion that SLS was estimated to cost. Casey said, 
The $178 million quote launch cost for the Falcon Heavy is $65 million less than the launch of the Mars Perseverance rover on an Atlas V. Furthermore, it did not take long for confidence in the heavy lift to rise, as it previously nabbed a lucrative contract to launch part of NASA's upcoming Lunar Gateway, which is a vital piece of the agency's moon architecture. And this lunar mission is highly anticipated because it would carry the space agency's astronauts to the moon for the first time in about four decades, after 1972. Elon Musk has also highlighted the capabilities of his rockets and further added that a starship could carry a lot of scientific instruments on its flights, far more than it is currently possible. And we could learn a tremendous amount of knowledge about space, compared to having to send fairly small vehicles with limited scientific instruments, which is what is currently being done. So scientists are now starting to dream of what Starship might let them do. Last year, a paper published by Jennifer Heldman of NASA Ames Research Center explored some of the scientific opportunities that might be opened by Starship missions to the Moon and Mars. One great benefit is that Starship could carry full-sized equipment from Earth, as was required for the Apollo missions to the Moon. In addition, because a Starship can land back on Earth, it will also be able to bring back vast amounts of samples. The sheer volume that could be returned from a variety of different locations would give scientists on Earth unprecedented access to extraterrestrial material. According to Heldman, that could shed light on a myriad of mysteries, such as the volcanic history of the Moon or the question of life and astrobiology on Mars. From the inner to the outer solar system, and possibly beyond, it may well open a whole new era of space science. So with that, the new missions to other planets like Mars and Jupiter are just a few steps away. Now let's talk about how Elon Musk and NASA are planning to explore Jupiter. Once at Jupiter, Clipper will conduct a detailed survey of Europa and use a sophisticated suite of science instruments to investigate whether the icy moon has conditions suitable for life. Key mission objectives are to image the moon's surface to help scientists determine its composition, look for signs of geological activity, and measure the thickness of the moon's icy shell. The probe will also search for subsurface lakes and determine the depth and salinity of Europa's subsurface ocean. The probe is to conduct a detailed survey of the icy-covered Jovian satellite, which is a bit smaller than Earth's moon and is a leading candidate in the search for life elsewhere in the solar system. Furthermore, a bend in Europa's magnetic field observed by NASA's Galileo spacecraft in 1997 appeared to have been caused by a geyser gushing through the moon's frozen crust from a vast subsurface ocean. Therefore, those findings supported other evidence of Europa's plumes. Getting to Jupiter is just the beginning for the spacecraft, as it will spend four years flying over the moon's surface. Clipper's observations will assess the moon's habitability, but will also help mission planners pick out promising sites for the proposed future lander, if that mission is able to get off the ground in the near future. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Do you think SpaceX and NASA will find any signs of life on Europa? Share with us in the comments below. And thank you for watching.